So today I'm going to be doing my Halloween costume video. I've never done a Halloween video before, so this will be fun. And it's gonna basically be me putting on my costume and getting ready for the 19th century. I'm doing a late 1800s style, so like 1890s. We're gonna party like it's 1899. Do 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 do. Okay, anyway. So we're gonna be beginning with the petticoat. This goes under all the rest of your skirts so that to make them look fuller and to get the right silhouette for the time, which was to have, you know, the hourglass shape. So we have the overskirt and then we have this uh, stiff mesh. You don't really usually wash these because you it's like, it's really stiff so that it's, the skirt sticks out. Um, if you wash it, it'll soften up. And then under we have the last layer. This is pretty old, it's been used a lot and it has like the stitches on it. So here's the skirt. Now this one you can just step into like so and then tie up the string on the side. It's a pretty long skirt. It goes down to my feet, so my feet are just peeking out. So there's a tie on the side, and I'm just gonna give that a quick bow in the middle of my waist. So we start with this, and now you can see I automatically have a fuller skirt shape than if I was just wearing a normal long skirt. It goes straight down. Next, we're going to be putting on the shirt. This is also quite old. It has some ruffles on the front. These are just fabric folded on top of each other and stitched. And then a kind of a lacy neck line. It has slightly poofed um, sleeves, which is also high in fashion. And this isn't very see-through, so you're not really gonna be able to see anything under this. And besides, we'll be putting on a jacket over. So. You just take it and you button it all the way down. So start at the very tippy top and button all the way down. After I put the shirt on, I'm going to tuck it in under the skirt. The little side that I've left. Very neat look. Everything was very neat and modest. With this shirt, I'm going to tie it like this. Next, we'll be putting on the corset. Now this is not a traditional corset. It is pretty new. It's more of a cummerbund, actually. Here's what it looks like. It's velvet on this side and leather on this side. So I think it's still almost historically accurate because it's leather. Might not be real leather, but you know. I'm just unknotted. So like many, there was, uh, like many corsets on the time, there's a tie in the front and a clip in the back. Usually it was a, I, a hook, but we have little snaps right here so you can easily unsnap it. If you need someone to help you with this, please get someone. I usually have someone do it with me, but don't have anyone here right now, so. Once you've got that snapped on, you take the ties and tighten it as much as you possibly can. Try to make sure you can still breathe, but still tighten it a lot. Since these are velvet, they're actually really slippy, so I can tighten it a fair amount, but still do your best to tighten it as much as you possibly can. And then tie it into a very tight bow. Great, now that we've got all the undergarments settled, we're gonna move on to the skirts and jacket. So usually over this, you would put one skirt or a dress without the shirt. You would just do the corset and an underslip. But um, I don't have a fancy Victorian dress, so I am going to be wearing some skirts. This is the first skirt. Um, it's not It's not very old fashioned. Uh, it has elastic in it, but I'm wearing, I'm not, this is not gonna be my final skirt, um, cause I don't particularly like the color of this. I'm going to be wearing this over the petticoat, and then I'm gonna be putting another skirt on top of that. Uh, after you put the petticoat on, you can't step into skirts anymore because it's it's huge, so you gotta put it over the head. So when I'm standing and walking, you'll barely be able to see my feet, like they just barely peek out from under. This is the next skirt, and it's a really lovely, 
peachy orange color with gold um, embroidery on it. This pattern, is, this is from India and look at the beautiful patterning. It's so pretty. The only thing about this skirt is that it's got this um, yeah, rip yeah. in the back. Well, it's not necessarily the back, it's the front. But I'm just not gonna, I think I'll put it to the side. Ties are in the front, but I'm gonna position so that the rip is in the side right here, so no one sees that. And then I'm gonna retie the little strings right here, nice and tight, because this is the overskirt, so you gotta make sure that it does not fall off. And then I'm gonna tuck that under the skirt, the little tie right there, just to get it out of the way and to completely secure. Now the the rip right here, it kind of just blends in with the rest of the skirt. So hopefully no one will notice that. Now the end of my skirt is a little bit strange because you have the green and then the orange, but I really, I really love the skirt, it's just too short. So I have to do the double skirt thing. Okay, so now we're moving on to the last components of the actual outfit, which are gonna go at the top, which include this jacket. Now this jacket is obviously not accurate because they have these big gold buttons, but I think it really pulls it together with the skirt. Um, these colors, I, usually people would wear something that, I think people would wear something that matched more, but we're gonna, I went with the orange and the black because it's Halloween. This is, I think this is the part where it gets a lot less accurate, but if I leave one open, I just love the look of it. The buttons are really kind of gaudy with the gold and the fake pearl, the little plastic things, but I really like it because it really ties together the outfit and like no one's gonna notice, no one's gonna care that they're giant. Okay, so I have a specific hairstyle that I'm actually going to do. I will link the original video below because this video, I love this hairstyle, it's amazing and it's for people with really long hair because back in the Victorian era, Everyone grew their hair out super long, like past their butt, and then they would just do these complex updos with curls and braids and buns. Um, this hairstyle is going to be generally easy. I found it on YouTube. This is not my hairstyle. This is Pursuing Everyday Beauty hairstyle on her channel. Pursuing Everyday Beauty. I will link her channel as well as the original video down below as this is not my hairstyle, but it's so cute. I had to use it. It's Victorian or modern, depending on how you accessorize it. Um, I love my hair down with this. It looks really cute, but that's not accurate to the era. So I'm gonna be doing this hairstyle. It's really cute. It's pretty simple. It's just, I mean, it might be time consuming, especially if you have longer hair than mine, if you have like really long hair, then it's probably pretty time consuming, but it's really easy and cute. So we're gonna, I'm gonna do this hairstyle just like she says in the video. So here we go. style and this is so cute I really like it and she's completely right it can be either modern or Victorian because it's just like really goes with the I feel like this is a really timeless hairstyle like it can go with Victorian era it can go with you know like the 60s and the 50s it's just really cute hairstyle or it can be today and you can put like she, like she did she put a little gold clip in it silver diamond little looking clip so here it is from the back. It might be a little messy, but it is what it is. When she did it, it was obviously a lot fuller and bigger. Like the bun area was a lot larger because she has uh, a lot more hair than I do. But considering, I think this is really cute. Even though I haven't seen the back of it yet. So I'm gonna take my glasses off for now. Uh, tomorrow I don't think I'll be wearing them in, in unless I need them, so I'll definitely, definitely bring them with me. 
but I won't be wearing them like I usually do, which is like <clears throat> all day. I'll be, I'll probably put them in a little bag and then I'll take them out and put them on when I need to see something. So the makeup look for this is nothing, really, because Victorian people did not believe in rouge or lips. They usually just pinched their cheeks and their bit their lips and pinched their lips to make to make them like look like you're flushed because that was the cutest look. But no one used like blush or rouge because that was scandalous and it like um, was connected with the ladies of the night. So no, everyone just stayed away from that. But what what you're like? What are you holding? What? Um, this is a BB cream. I have some acne. I did hear in one video. I've been looking at a lot of videos about Victorian beauty, makeup, and hair. And they said that they did believe in clear skin though. They did, you wanted to have the rouge flushed look, but you didn't actually want to use rouge or lipstick. So, I have naturally pretty pink lips. I have acne and a slight sunburn, so <laughs> we'll go with that. Right here, um, it's just a, it's just a BB cream with a little bit of, um, zinc and SPF in it, 30 SPF. This is the, this is the color. I don't think it matches me, but people were always trying to look dead and pale. So I'm gonna do some of this on my face. This is the color. Like, I, th I don't know if it's light or if it's too light or too dark for me. I have no idea. But I'm just gonna put this all over my face. I know that it works a little bit because on my lips, it'll like turn my lips kind of whitish and look crusty. I'm gonna take an extra pump and then put it on my acne. I don't usually use this much. I usually use one pump. But today we're gonna use a little bit more than usual for this look so I have a clear skin. Okay, for shoes, I have these ballet flats. I mean, they're just flats, these shoes. Um, they're not accurate, they have elastic. I honestly have no idea. Most women just, oh, I think it was boots. I think boots were a thing. I don't have boots, so we're not doing that. So I'm just gonna wear these flats because I don't have anything else that looks remotely snazzy. And this is the completed look. Ah! And this is the finished All Hallows Eve look. If you'd like to subscribe to this fine establishment, please click here. If you'd like to see some of these other Maidens videos, please click here or here. Thank you very much for watching this. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, and comment what you are going to be for this Halloween. Goodbye, or ta-ta, or, you know, toodaloo, whatever people said then.